The Scalabrini Centre has a wide range of programs, all of which come alongside, engage with and aim to assist people on the move. The Centre's vision is focused on four pillars, four verbs, to welcome, to protect, to promote and to integrate. In 2013, the South African Legislature saw it fit to introduce a legislative amendment to the Citizenship Act that impacts on one of these pillars, particularly the pillar of integration, to integrate. As, as a result of the, the, the amendment, children who were born in South Africa, who resided in South Africa until they reached the age of 18, are able to apply for South African citizenship if they were born to non-South African parents. And while this is a, a, a wonderful uh, step towards integration of people who have been here for 18 years plus, the actual implementation of the amendment was not nearly as easy as, we, as had been anticipated. And it actually ultimately took uh, a series of litigation before the amendment was actually brought into force. We're going to hear from one person who tells her story of how this, this uh, situation developed and impacted on her life. And then we'll hear from a legal expert who was involved in the litigation on the case. I was born in Cape Town at a very well-known hospital called Tigerberg Hospital. I went to a school in the Cape Town suburb called Kudud. It is 20 minutes away from Table Mountain and the city of Cape Town. When we lived there, there wasn't a lot of people that looked like me. Not my skin tone um, or they didn't speak the way I did uh, because my parents were both foreigners. We spoke different languages. I remember my first day of primary school, this girl actually pushed me out of the line and she was like, you should stand at the back because you're black. And at that moment, I thought that my biggest issue was the fact that I was black. In high school, I'd say it was a little bit different because then I started meeting people like me, students from Rwanda, students from Zimbabwe. So even though I wasn't close to South Africans, I was at least finding I would say my own tribe. My parents fled from Angola in 1994, going to 1995. Uh, the reason that they fled was because there was a civil war. They kept on referring to South Africa as almost like a safe haven. It felt like a liberated place to be. I realized that I didn't have citizenship when I was in matric. Um, I got asked by my school teacher to produce um, an identity document for me to put it on my matric certificate and I didn't have one. So I brought my refugee status and she told me that she doesn't know if she'll be able to put the CTR number on it. And that's when I realized something was wrong. I was completely different to my friends who could just whip out their citizenship or their ID. I couldn't get a bank account. I couldn't go on an airplane, so like at school they would always ask us to like go on trips to Joburg or to like Pretoria and I could never go with because I had no form of identification. I couldn't apply for things online if I ever wanted to buy things online. I couldn't open up a library card um, because you need your ID for that as well. At Stellenbosch University I tried attending a year trying to do my communications degree but I had to stop mid-year because I couldn't apply for any bursaries with an asylum paper. After that, I just, I kind of just gave up on the whole university dream. I felt like my friends were moving on with their lives and I was just constantly stuck. I was born in South Africa and I can't get any form of identification, but I've been Googling and I've been researching and I know in the Constitution it says that I have the right of becoming a South African citizen, especially if I was born in South Africa. It was a continuous battle with Home Affairs. Um, the first year we went to court with them, we went to the High Court. Uh, we won, they appealed. Um, second time we went to court again, Supreme Court, we won, they appealed again. Um, this is all in the, the course of six years. After winning from the Supreme Court, Home Affairs appealed again. We took the case further up to the Constitutional Court and Home Affairs appealed again. But luckily the Constitutional Court denied the appeal. 
out of the six applicants that started the case, only four of us received our, our documents, our identity cards. I don't think people realize how significant it is to see your name and your ID number on a piece of paper and just know that like that is your identity. You, like, it makes you feel like you are a person. I get to just live my life. I've gotten my, my learners. The first thing I've done was open up my bank account. So it's, it's opened up my horizons. I do still have moments where I do feel like I'm, I'm more of a foreigner and a refugee. I guess it's just from years of battling with trying to find out who I am or trying to find my identity. The Muriel IUK centers around citizenship by naturalization. Um, the South African government promulgated uh, the uh, amendment to the citizenship that paved the way for children born to foreign parents who weren't permanent residents, an avenue to apply for citizenship when they reach the age of 18. Um, uh, what the government failed to do was promulgate regulations that enable this process and application process to proceed. The LRC were instructed by five applicants who uh, all fit the criteria for citizenship by naturalization, but were unable to access the process, the application process, because there were no regulations. And that's the crux of the case, and this is why the LRC approached the Western Cape High Court to force the government to promulgate regulations and in the interim allow those clients and all other uh, people that met the criteria to apply for citizenship uh, via an affidavit. Um, the, the case, the Maria Mali case, went all the way to the Constitutional Court um, and was finally in 2020, the applicants in that case were able to get citizenship um, via that section. The impact of the case was that a lot of children born in South Africa um, and that have lived here for the duration of their, um, you know, the majority of their lives and have no association to their parents' country of origin were able to uh, obtain citizenship, which is, a, which is an important gateway to other rights, for example, the right to vote. Um, um, it also um, provides them with a safety net um, against um, things like xenophobia um, because, you know, South Africans are more receptive when you have a, a green identity document as opposed to uh, a, a maroon refugee ID or any other foreign documentation. Uh, so there's more acceptance by the South African public of somebody who's a fellow citizen um, than somebody that's undocumented. Uh, the Scalabrini Centre and many other uh, partner organisations have worked with uh, young people who've reached the age of 18 uh, to apply for citizenship on affidavit. And there has actually been remarkable uh, and, and wonderful success, resounding success, particularly this year, 2022, where a number of young people who have applied on affidavit have been re receiving and granted South African citizenship. This is a wonderful uh, testament to integration um, and it's hoped that this will continue for those whose applications are still pending as well as those who uh, reach 18 and wish to apply. Um, we also really look forward to um, and await the, the regulations and a clear procedure with respect uh, to uh, the, the amendment um, and would encourage any young people who reach the age of 18 uh, to make an application.